Greetings car book fans, I'm Jason and welcome to my comic book reviews for the second week of August 2015. I can every week I cannot believe how fast this year is going. It's been an up and down week, yeah, it's been pretty crap. I'm still unemployed in that regard, it's pretty crap. But it's times like this you need those comics more than ever, that comic book goodness more than ever because it helps you escape the shit that is life. Um, so yeah, so like when I'm not looking for jobs, um, football season has just begun here in the UK, proper football, not this stuff they wear, play with all these pads on, no, proper football. Um, so yeah, we've had that back, so it's brilliant, brilliant to have that back. Um, my team, we've won one last one, so yeah, it's so good. Um, but you don't want to hear me twittering on about my life or about football. We want to get into the comics and it's a big week this week. 21 books to review. So without further ado, let's get into those reviews. So kick things off with DC. Got six books to review this week. First up, we have a book from a few weeks ago. It is He-Man, The Eternity War, issue number eight. I got issue seven as well. But I figured, because there's so many books this week to review, I'm just going to review issue number 8. Um, bit of the backstory to this, it's been pretty crap time for me lately, being unemployed. And it's been really demoralising, and my confidence has been really low. Just like going for jobs and not even hearing back from them. And so what do you do when you're feeling low? You kind of wrap yourself up in better times. You think back to better times, wrap yourself up in nostalgia. So I decided to... To kind, I was watching some He-Man cartoons and he definitely did not live up to what I remembered it being as a kid. But um, I've, I've been looking at this and I decided to pick it up. It's written by Dan Ablett uh, with Art White Putman. And the story is quite easy to follow. Um, basically, Hordak has invaded Eternia. He has got evil in at his side now. She's betrayed Skeletor. He's taken over Greyskull. Prince Adam has lost the power to be He-Man. He's given it up um, to win a battle. He's now leading, he's now King Adam, and he's leading this army of Eternians and Snake Men, and they've won back the palace, and it's this big victory for them. But he still hasn't got the confidence that he had as He-Man, and he's trying, but he's trying to be this really good leader for his people. Meanwhile, Skeletor is trying to get Hordak's power. The Hordak's power comes from souls. So the world where Hordak was before, he's left this vault with all these souls in that he took power from. So Skeletor's gone there with She-Ra to get this power. So that, that's basically this. While well, meanwhile Hordak is preparing to unveil how much power he's got now he controls Grayskull. So you've got all these things going on. The big parts of the story I understood and I followed no problem. Um, some of the other de smaller details, like why is Adam not human anymore, we get it mentioned, but you don't know the nuts and bolts of what happened. But you kind of get the broad strokes, and it works really well in that way. I like this uh, how they're building on things we we knew from the TV show. Like they've really fleshed out Skeletor's character to his a much more interesting character than he was in the original cartoon. You've got on the cover here. You've got. Tila there in that snake headdress, the green woman. Now she wasn't green in, in the original cartoon, but the action figure did used to come with the snake headdress and this staff with the snake on it. And I like how they've kind of took that and you get that she's somehow connected to the snake men now. And I like that whole idea that they've took something that was there and they've built on it. Same with Ed Skeletor, his staff really comes into the story. And so I'm liking how they're taking stuff that we already knew and they're building on it. Um, we get betrayal in this issue and we, Hordak's power is shocking when you see how much he's got and you're kind of really questioning how is Adam and what he's got left, how are they going to be defeat Hordak. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. It, it, it wasn't kind of like a blow me away book and I think if you wasn't familiar with these characters from your childhood you might struggle to follow it. But if you followed it as followed the cartoon as a kid, I think this is a lot of fun and I give He-Man the Eternity War issue number eight, four stars out of five. So moving to this week's books now, we have Green Arrow issue number 43. And this is definitely a book that is on the upswing. Um, it's really coming back to being good. I really like that we have Henry and Emiko back in the book. Um, they were two characters that the previous creative team kind of let go. And I was really sad when they let them go, but I'm really glad they've been brought back into it. 
George the Wolf is a great addition as well. I love the design of the Panopticons and the art in general in this book is really good. Um, but yeah, just the design there of the Panopticons is really cool and so that's really good. It was surprising this issue that we wrap up this story three issues in, um, which was nice, a nice surprise because so often stories go four or five issues, whether you've got the story to tell it in that time or not. Um, so it's really nice to have a story, just three issues for a change. That's really nice. It definitely feels like a book heading in the right direction. And I give Green Hour issue number 43, four stars out of five. So next up we have Constantine, the Hellblazer, issue number three. This issue we kind of take a sidestep from the story we followed in the first two issues. Um, I really like the tone of this book. Very different from the previous kinds of team we've got in the New 52. And I've heard some people in reviews say that this is more in tone with the Vertigo series, which if it is, I really want to check out this series because I'm loving the tone of this. Constantine's a very complicated and character which makes him fascinating. He's not your typical hero and I like that about him and he makes him interesting. Um, yeah, we move away from the main story which is a bit of a downer. But it still was a good issue with a good story. And I like what they do with the art. Because, like, we have these flashback moments like that. And and then the rest of the art and the issue is like that. So I like how the two art styles work, um, work well together. I liked that. All in all, I think this is another uh, a book that's really good. DC right now are kind of really experimenting with books with different tones and different feels and I'm liking what they're doing and I'm going to give Constantine the Hellblazer issue number three four stars out of five so moving over now to Batman Superman issue number 23 I like these covers action comics have a similar thing going on but I really like these covers uh, this really is kind of like two stories going on here we've got Superman who has gone to Subterranea to kind because of, he feels responsible for what's happened to them so he goes to kind of find out what's happening down there and how he can help and how they can find a peaceful solution to this whole problem i like the journey the story that goes on this journey and i like it and the inner monologues of superman are really well written and, and it made it for such a fantastic fascinating journey as kind of he realizes what's going on and it isn't as straightforward as at first you'd think we have Bat Gordon, meanwhile, kind of trying to find out is Superman somebody he should trust, somebody he should work with. So who better to go and ask but Lois Lane. And there's a really great scene between Bat Gordon and Lois Lane. I was a bit troubled with why is Bat Gordon telling her, oh, I'm Batman. And it's like, it seems like everybody he meets lately, he's like, oh yeah, I'm Batman. You know, it's like, I don't like that. But maybe that's the old fashioned person in me growing up with all secret identities. I kind of find it difficult that so many of these superheroes today live it out in the open and you think I don't think there's enough exploration into how the costs of that I think occasionally we get it but it'd be very interesting if in this book because Gordon's selling so many people if at some point there's a cost to him being so open and letting people know yes I'm Batman um, but I'm enjoying this story a lot I love how Greg Path writes Superman it is a bit sad that DC feel that they can only make Superman interesting if he's depowered. Um, I think you. Do, I think yeah, you may have to work uh, harder with the character, but I think you can make him interesting in any guys. I think you look at Dan Jurgens and Lee Weeks' uh, two issue series during Convergence. They had a super powered Superman, and it was fantastic. It was a fantastic series. So I think. Yeah, you may have to work harder, you may have to be more imaginative, but I think you can make his character interesting without depowering him. But I'm enjoying this, and I'm going to give Superman, Batman, or Batman, Superman, rather, issue number 23, five stars out of five, because I'm really enjoying this. Next up, we have Superman Action Comics, issue number 43. Uh, last issue was really good, with the, the whole moment of Superman hitting this police officer that had been goading him for the entire issue. This issue... Great developments in that, because like, even though he's a bit depowered, he could still kill somebody by hitting them. So, kind of like, you're freaking out, thinking, damn, what? he has not just killed a policeman, this is going to be bad. 
but then there's some really cool developments and I like where the story goes I like that the initial fight and the initial conflict is finished quite early in the issue so we get all the fallout from it and we get to see what's going on and I, I really enjoyed this again loving how Greg Path writes Superman the art here from Adam Kuda is fantastic um, all in all I'm just really enjoying the Superman books right now and these two are two of my faves so I'm going to give Superman Action Comics issue number 43 5 stars out of 5 so rounding out our DC books for this week we have Batman issue number 43 um, you know the creative team on this book uh, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo they are just such a creative peak right now that they're just super consistent with every issue they throw out um, I'm loving how he writes Bat Gordon he makes him a much more convincing character than some of the other books um, I also really like the moments here between Alfred and Superman as Clark is kind of decided should he let Batman go or should he try and bring Bruce back as we meet Bruce Wayne Bruce Wayne is still alive but he's not the Bruce Wayne he was and I like that wrinkle I like the tease of a way they might fix it in the future but all in all I, I really liked where they're going with that um, and last issue I thought it was a bit too soon to bring Bruce back but the way they bring him back and the way they explain it all I really really liked and it worked really well um, I like what's going on with Bat Gordon and the whole thing with Mr. Bloom as well is really interesting. A shocking conclusion as well that just had me flabbergasted. All in all, really good issue and I'm liking what they're doing uh, right now. And it's going to be very interesting to see where it goes. I'm going to give Batman issue number 43, 5 stars out of 5. So those are my DC books. Next up, it's time to take it to the indies. So a big chunk of indies this week, 8 books to get through uh, indie wise, so without further ado let's get into them. Uh, we kick things off with Doctor Who, 4 Doctors issue number 1. This is a new weekly event from Titan Comics that is going to run for 5 issues. It is written by Paul Connell who has written Doctor Who books, he's written episodes for TV, so somebody who's very familiar with Doctor Who. He's also written comics like uh, Stormwatch. Demon Knights, um, he did Captain Britain for a bit, so he's used to writing comics as well. We then have Neil Edwards uh, art on art. Um, I went into this not really sure what to expect. I thought I, it was going to be the ninth Doctor with the 10th, 11th and 12th, because those are the books that they've done. But no, it looks like they're going to choose to have the War Doctor teaming up with 10, 11 and 12. It looks like that could be the way. The story kicks off in the Time War, which is just epic. Um, which is just epic. Um, as we are on uh, Marinus, which some of you who are big Doctor Who fans will recognise that planet from um, the early days of the classic Who. And so we've got something going on on Marinus. We then uh, jump to, to Clara, and she. And we have this adventure that has kind of gone on with Clara and the Doctor and this moment she's got to stop. This moment where the three Doctors meet up. and It can't happen. So she meets up, she manages to meet up with the Doctor's companions to try to get in Paris to try and get them to stop the Doctors meeting up. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out that way and that's when things go wrong. Um, I enjoyed the story. I did question how does Clara know which companions to find. Um, yes, she knows all the faces of the Doctors, but she doesn't know all the companions. So I was a bit perplexed and how that could come about. Um, I'm just looking at my notes, sorry. Um, it was a surprise to see the Time War in here, which I was really pleased about. I do wonder how they're going to link it all up so that, because like, the Doctor, the War Doctor, had never met none of the other Doctors, so I kind of wonder, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to not tr tread on the Day of the Doctor while still involving him, so that's going to be interesting to see how they pull that off. Um, it's nice to touch Paul Canal Ryan because he knows his Doctor Who history, so, so I, I, I'd imagine that's why we've got something like Morinus in there, which I really like, I thought that was again another nice touch. Um, 
and the end of it the characters that come back at the end i'm really intrigued to see where that's going to take the story but so off to a good start i'm going to give doctor who four doctors issue number one four stars out of five you could say a star for every doctor so next up we have descenders issue number six and this book's really coming into its it's really good stage now it was a bit of a slow build in the beginning but the, the last issue really kicked into high gear and this issue just keeps it going we get the whole backstory into uh, this character on the cover and how you know he first discovered robotics and how 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 they got the technology to build tim and i like how we start kind of with this prolonged flashback uh, kind of looking back on how he found this this other robot and then we kind of jump to so we have like the bulk of the issue is this this flashback and then we jump to the present day and uh, things are looking grim for our heroes until you know some new characters turn up um, we're adding new characters to the book We've still got plenty of story we're exploring and we're finding out. So I'm really enjoying a lot of what's going on here. I would have a slight gripe with the art. I, I just don't, I don't know. I'm kind of, there's part of me that does really like it. Because Dustin Nugent does do a really good job and it's very unique. But there's a part of me as well that kind of wants a bit more in some parts of the story. That would like a bit more detail. Um... So I don't know, I kind of was going backwards and forth on the art. Because I, I have been liking it, but I just, I don't know. It's a bit, maybe a bit too loose for me, I don't know. Um, but in the main, I'm really enjoying this book. I feel it's really getting good. The story is first class. Uh, they should be having the first trade of this out soon. And it's definitely worth a pick up. Um, really, really getting good. And I'm going to give Descender issue number 6, 5 stars out of 5. So next up we have Bloodshot Reborn, issue number 5. This issue, Ray deals with his voices. He has to face up to them and kind of reach a stage with them where he can move on. And we don't, and so a lot of this issue is a bit trippy. We don't know what parts of reality and what parts are in his mind. Which kind of adds something in a strange way to the book. Um, as you're trying to figure, trying to figure it all out. Um, I enjoyed the issue. I thought it was a fun story. It does take us for one issue off our main story um, as he's trying to get the rest of the nanites. But it's something that needs to be dealt with. And I think now he's got magic, we would kind of reached that point where his voices don't like magic. So kind of like if he's going to stick with magic, he's got to deal with the voices. So he's dealing with them, this issue. And I liked where that went. I'm liking the partnership of Ray and magic and I'm interested to see where that relationship goes. Um, the art this issue I, I really enjoyed I'm trying there's one a couple of particular moments that I really liked um, with blood squirt are these moments here uh, that I really liked and um, a lot of the stuff with blood squirt was, was really quite fun and like I say it's a bit trippy in parts because you don't know kind of what's real and what kind of in his head uh, but yeah I'm enjoying Bloodshot a lot and I'm going to give Bloodshot Reborn issue number 5 5 stars out of 5 so again back to Doctor Who we have Doctor Who the 11th Doctor issue number 15 this is I'm, I'm pretty sure is yeah is the conclusion of year 1 of this book they're going to re relaunch the books I, I don't I think, don't think it was this one one of the other books I'm sure it was. They're going to relaunch the books. I like all with year two. So this is kind of like the season finale. The, the end of the story. It wraps up. And pretty much it's been one whole story from issue one. There have been times I've not enjoyed this story. But I think it's really come together in the last few issues. Um, the last issue we kind of left on the cliffhanger. The TARDIS had rejected the Jupiter. And his mother was now the Time Lord that the, the TARDIS was travelling with. And you kind of think, well, how did the Doctor's mother come into this? But we find out it's not her, it's the talent scout. And he is trying to take off in the TARDIS. So the Doctor has to try and get the TARDIS back. Um, Art-wise, there are some really great moments in this issue. 
um, I really really liked um, a lot of the art and the colours in this issue you know um, there's some really great choices art wise here and, you know that they just lay it out really nicely So yeah, there's some great moments here. Really enjoyed this issue. Um, again, I'm just trying to find my notes. A very strong conclusion, like I say. The art was fantastic, but the story also was very satisfying how they round everything up. And there's a really nice moment at the end with Doctor's um, companion Alice and, and the Doctor that I really liked. All in all, this was really good stuff. And I give Doctor Who, the 11th Doctor, issue number 15, five stars out of five. So next up we have Exile Man of War issue number 39. This was brilliant stuff, really enjoyed this. Um, a really, sorry I just had a mind fart then, sorry. My mind just wandered. Um, yeah, so this issue, the, it starts off a brand new arc called Exodus uh, part one. And we saw a few issues ago, the Vine had to leave their planet because of a dead hand that destroyed their planet so they come to earth because they want to be with Sahara the armor that that Exo Man of War uses so they come to earth but then we have people on earth who think it's an alien invasion again we have Arix people who remember the vine enslaved them so they don't particularly are too friendly with the vine uh, we've got a fighter pilot dealing with post-traumatic shock and thinking that these are alien invaders again and it's really brilliant how they just add this one group of characters, the Vine, into this one environment and you watch everything explode and all this new story kind of comes out and there's just so much going on. It was excellent and just, just by one simple thing, just introducing these characters into the main part of the story, brilliant. Uh, so simply done but Venditti just does a fantastic job here story-wise. Um, I, I really, really um, enjoyed it. Big developments, great action. I'm going to give uh, Exo Man Award issue number 39, 5 stars out of 5. Moving right along now to Image, and we have Injection issue number 4, uh, written by Ryan Ellis, art by D. D Declan Shelby, uh, colours by Jordi Belair. Um, All star team, really, there. We kind of get more of this issue on what Injection is, and we kind of feel like we're getting nearer to answers. Um, the book has kind of like a foot in the past and a foot in the present but it works and they works that balance really well and they they kind of work together well to kind of give us more story i do feel that this book is going to be a book that's going to read much much better in trade i feel that once you get that like all the six issues i think you're going to be able to follow the story easier than it has been to follow in singles because it's only the last two issues that i found this story starting to make sense um, I think there is a good story here and it's beginning to build and that is exciting that we're actually beginning to get answers. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it all the same, I'm going to stick with it and I give Injection issue number 4, 4 stars out of 5. So then we have Doctor Who, the 10th Doctor issue number 14, which is the penultimate part of this story. Um, I like the tie in this issue to um, Classic Who. And to, just to hear those words again, Sutek is just fantastic. So I love how they tie it into Classic Who. Um, I don't get why in the story the Doctor and Cindy are split up from everybody else. Because it, they get back with everyone by the end of the issue. And it kind of, it didn't really make any sense to me why they were split up. Um, there's some characters in here that I don't understand why they're still alive when they could have killed them off because they're not really serving any purpose and it's going to be interesting next issue to see if if that actually does serve a purpose really liking the Dorothy character and her awakening as she's merged with this alien consciousness and their awakening as a single entity going from being two entities to one I really like that journey we followed over the last two issues and for me that's been one of the highlights here this issue kind of felt like they could have moved things a lot longer, quicker. It felt like where we got to, I didn't need to take so long. Um, but all in all, 
there are as things I'm enjoying in the, it'd be the story and certainly where it ends up and with the links to classic who are good so I'm going to give Doctor Who 10th Doctor issue number 14 3 stars out of 5 so our final indie book to review it is Unity issue number 21 from Valiant Comics and this continues the Warmonger story which I've really been enjoying um, you know we get the end of her history and you know I've liked how they've done that um, and we get this great scene from Vietnam in 1972 and this team that gets sent in to take her out we have Wind, Zeppelin 2, uh, Blood Sh Bloodshot um, and Bloodshot here is just fantastic and I'm wondering is that the Bloodshot we know now or is this a different Bloodshot have there been like a number of blood shots? So that was something I wondered. But I really liked uh, this particular chapter of Warmonger's story as it brings it up to date. We have two, a couple of artists. I, I was going to say two, but we have a couple. Uh, we this is the art for the the flashback, the Warmonger scenes. But then we have some scenes that are set in the present day. Um, where the art I didn't like. That is supposed to be Eternal Warrior there talking with Warmonger. Um, yeah, I don't mind it being different, but I just didn't like the art. The, the faces just looked funny. And I, there's no Incas mentioned, so I think they may have inked their own thing. I, I, I think the lines for those modern day scenes, um, the ink is, is very thick. Um, and I just didn't like the style. Uh, there at all, and I'm not totally sure because I'm I'm not a big expert on inking, but I just I think the inking really did not help. But also I think the facial features were not good at all here. Um, stories clicking together nicely. I'm liking the Warmonger as a character, and I've liked all these flashback scenes into finding out about her. Um, looking forward to seeing next issue to see the now we've got who she is. We and we kind of get clues here to what's been going on. Um, so I'm looking forward to next issue now to see how this is all going to tie together. But I give Unity issue number 21, 4 stars out of 5. So that uh, pretty long part here that we did have 9 books to go through. And not bad 9 books in 15 minutes. Um, final stack of reviews next up as we make ours Marvel. So the final set of reviews today, we have Marvel and we have six books to get through. Uh, kicking things off with Star Wars Lando, issue number two, which is the only book this week that for Marvel that is not Secret Wars related. Um, I really like the art and the colours this issue. Um, Alex Marviv does a really great job art-wise on this. Um, in particular, I love how he draws his Star Destroyers. Uh, I think they look really good. Um, but yeah, the book looks gorgeous. Um, as for the story, it's action packed. I'm liking the discovery that they're finding. Well, wait a minute, we've got a lot of treasure on this ship. This look, this is looking good. So that's really cool, and the discoveries, and it leads to a really shocking conclusion. I did have a bit of a problem with how the Star Destroyers got them so quickly. Um, you'd think the time it takes to communicate backwards and forth and to get the ships to where they need to be, I, I just didn't. I, I just yeah and yeah it's the emperor so it's ultra important but I just didn't get how they would catch up with Lando and his crew so quickly um, when you know you gotta think they wouldn't notice straight away that it had been stolen so I was kind of a bit how did they ca catch up with them so quick even if they knew the stuff had been stolen to get ships out there and and everything so quickly yeah it's still it's still I didn't quite get how that worked um, I like we're getting introduced to a new bounty hunter, that's going to be cool. Always love the bounty hunters in the Star Wars universe. Um, I think they're the most interesting characters. I know in all the films, it was all those moments, like in, in A New Hope, when we had the Mos Eisley Cantina. In Empire, when we, they were on board, Darth Vader's Star Destroyer. And in Jedi with Jabba's Palace. Those were all the moments that really stuck out to me in the Star Wars film. So, I'm always excited when we're going to see a bounty hunter. Um, but yeah, I... I I enjoyed this in the main, even though there were problems with it. Um, but I'm going to give Star Wars Lando issue number two three stars out of five. So getting into our Secret Wars books, and we have um, Master of Kung Fu issue number four. This is the conclusion of this book. 
very satisfying conclusion wraps everything up really well um, there's a really shocking turn at the, a revelation at the end that I liked a lot um, and the story as a whole was really really good um, really good stuff wraps everything up beautifully the truth about loads of different things there's a couple of shocks and twists as the story goes on so all in all I really enjoyed this and like I say very satisfying conclusion gonna give Master of Kung Fu issue number four five stars out of five so next up we have years of future past issue number four and this book is just can, can remain being a lot of fun uh, there's great action scenes there's this one moment where Magneto turns up and he's kind of like he, he's got a sentinel as like this armor uh, which is really cool the R again like a lot of these Secret Wars books has kind of gone the line I've kind of given you that old school flavor of the original but with school new school style and I really like like what they do with the R the story is really good I like how they bring in the two main characters whose names at the moment escape me um, and they bring Christina and Cameron into conflict with each other because they've both had different upbringings and they're both sort of different sides of the world and I really like that these two characters are central to the conflict at the end and I'm really interested to see how this is all going to end up um, but uh, another really enjoyable issue I like where the story's going I'm going to give Years of Future Past issue number 4 5 stars out of 5 so next up we have Planet Hulk issue number 4 and I think this is the best issue yet of this series. I think the previous issues have been a lot of fun and there's been a lot of action but there's not been a lot of kind of real development going on with the characters. But this issue we get like, there's a bit of a mystery they create with Doc Green, who is he? Um, there's something happens in here that kind of really makes you question who he is. Um, we then have a big revelation, we get Steve Rogers to the Red King and we have this big revelation of Bucky and just this big oh my god moment at the end of the issue really enjoyed it, there's still all the crazy action, you've still got Devil Dinosaur in there but they're also kind of putting a bit more stuff in there now that makes the story a bit more interesting so I'm really loving it still not a patch on the original but as it's a story in its own right it's still really good and definitely the strongest issue of the series so far I give issue number 4 of Planet Hulk 5 stars out of 5 so our penultimate book from Marvel this week it is A-Force issue number 3 and last issue we saw She-Hulk was in deep doo-doo as she went through the portal Things go bad to worse. First she faces some Sentinels, then it's Fours. So we get great moments for She-Hulk fans as we get, get to see her have plenty of action. But things are going bad for Arcadia. Um, she returns to Arcadia to say that there's a traitor. I didn't quite understand how she formed that theory. I like She-Hulk as a character because she's always the strong woman. But she uses her mind to solve her problems, not her fists. And she got that great power that she'll use if she has to, but she'd much rather sit down and sort the problem out verbally than physically. And that's something I've always liked about the character. And uh, however, I do really have a difficulty with how does she, just from travelling to this other world and returning, how does she get that there's a traitor? Yes, somebody's trying to set them up, but it could easily it just as be a baron from another kingdom who wants to see Arcadia destroyed. So they can have that territory added to their kingdom you know it, it's just as likely as there's a trader I didn't understand what the evidence was that there was a trader but apparently that's where the story is going so you're gathering she's right I just didn't understand how she came to that conclusion it just seemed very random um, but yeah the story is fast-paced action-packed really enjoyed um, this issue plenty going on um, and we have this one mysterious character and I'm really looking forward to finding out more about her uh, but I'm going to give A-Force issue number 3 4 stars out of 5 so now our final book of, of from Marvel it is Secret Wars issue number 5 um, once again art wise the book is brilliant story wise we kind of take a side step as um, we get the origin of, of Battle World basically and we get to see what happened with Doom, Strange and the Molecule Man and how Battle World was formed. So that is really cool that we kind of get more answers. I was a slightly a bit annoyed because that 
until the end we don't get to see what's happened to the characters that strange kind of spread throughout battle world um and i was a bit annoyed because i really wanted to see it and i wish they'd found a way to kind of intersperse what happened the origin of battle world with what's happened to the other characters i think i would have liked to have seen that i don't know if that would have worked as well but I just this just left me one feeling disappointed I didn't get to see more of what's happening with the other characters uh, even though I did enjoy getting the origin of Backworld. Um, I'm going to give Secret Wars issue number 5 4 stars out of 5. So those are my, my Marvel books. Uh, the last book left to review is my pick of the week. So we are, my pick of the week for the second week of August 2015 is Harold County issue number 4. It was one of those weeks where there were some really good books, but nothing really le leapt out at me. Usually I'm pretty lucky, I read my books, and one, maybe sometimes two books will leap out at me that will say, yeah, I enjoyed those more than the rest, or that book was, you know, the, the book I, 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 I felt was the best. This week, though there were some good books, there was nothing that was really leaping out at me until I read Harold County. This was the closest I came to a book that really leaped out at me this week. Um, I'm really liking the developments that are going on here. I haven't read a great deal of Colin Bunn's work. I read uh, the Wolverine series that he did for Marvel, which I really enjoyed. I've been reading Magneto, which I've been enjoying. Um, I read the beginning of his Deadpool Secret Secret Wars that I didn't like and there was another Aquaman, his Aquaman run that I dropped because I didn't like the first issue of that. Um, so it's kind of like some stuff of his I really like and other stuff I'm not so keen on. But this, out of the stuff I've read of his, is certainly the best Colin Bunn I've read. Um, it's a really, really good series. It, do, it would do it a disservice if you just said it was similar to Witches because the only similarity that it has with Witches is that um, it involves witches, which is not to kind of put down, which is an awesome series, one of my faves, but this book, that the only thing that they share is that there's a witch. So uh, we have this girl who's the, 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 the reincarnation of this witch, but she doesn't have her memories. So um, the villagers, including the guy who's raised her as, his, as her father, they trying to kill her, she's running, this issue, she she's in the woods and she encounters this monster that the witch had, um, which is a really cool cool moment. Um, and there and then there's there's people. She encounters um, this old man uh, who's the town chemist, who recounts this tale of how he's one of the witch's followers and he's waited all these years. Um, and it's kind of I get the gist that he's going to kind of give the girl the witch's memories so the witch will be fully back um, so that was really cool and it really it really kind of changed things up added this whole new dynamic to the book in that the village there's not only these people that are against the witch that killed the witch but there's also these people that are her followers so that was a new wrinkle that they added in there the thing I love the most about this issue is our character, main character who's been a victim pretty much for the first three issues. She takes ownership of her life this issue. She takes ownership of her circumstances and she really bounces back. And the book ends with her character being in a much more um, positive place as she kind of faces up to the villagers um, who want to kill her. And there's this really great moment where she just really steps up and is like, you stay the away from me if you try to mess with me i will take you out and i really love how those of how her character has really kind to draw on this strength and that she's not the person they think she is yes she's the reincarnation of the witch but she's been raised a different way so i really liked that kind of turn of events um the art as well this issue as you've seen from the little bits i've shown i really love the art and the color on the series it really adds to it. Um, all in all, I'm really loving this book, um, and I'm really intrigued to see where we're going to go. The end kind of gives us a glimpse of something else, which could be interesting. That I'm intrigued what that means. Uh, but all in all, th this is just a brilliant book, and I give Harold County issue number four my pick of the week. 
So here we are, final part of the video, company of the week. While that is for anybody new, it is where I take the scores, for example DC, I take the, add all the scores the books I've got, I divide by the number of DC books I've read, and that gives me an average score. I do the same for Marvel and the Indies, and then we see which one of them get, got the best score this week. Um, so, kicking things off in third place with an average rating of 4.3, we have Marvel Comics. In second place with an average rating of 4.4, it is the Indies. And so, in first place with an average rating of 4.6, it is DC Comics. A D good week for DC this week. And speaking of DC, this came in the post this morning. Uh, it is He-Man the Eternity War issue number one. It is the Darwin Cook variant. I really like Darwin Cook's um, art and I've got quite a few of these variants. This was the month where DC, the, the, all the, well not all the books, but a lot of the books are the variant, the Darwin Cook variant. Um, I really like Darwin Cook, so when I saw they did a He-Man variant, I had to get it. Um, even though maybe I shouldn't have, but hey. Um, so that was cool. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. I will be back with our comic book haul video on Wednesday. Um, it's a smaller week this week. Uh, it's only 13 books, I think it is. I like when did that happen? You know, I can remember when I first did started doing these videos. Um, anything over 10 would be a big week, and now I've got a week like 13 books, and I'm thinking of it as a small week. When did that happen? That is insane. Um, but anywho, so yeah, so sure. so like happily, it's a smaller week, as I said. Um, if you like the video, please give me those beautiful thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've all had a good week. I will see you again soon. I've been Jason. This has been my comic reviews. Bye for now.